Patriots just made um, moments ago, bringing in some weapons at wide receiver. Not a big splash. I did a video about the Patriots pencil diving into the offseason yesterday, and this is kind of a pencil dive move, but he is one of the probably the third or fourth best receiver in Minnesota um, this past season. The Patriots are bringing in Vikings wide receiver K.J. Osborne. He's a former fifth rounder. Um, Patriots obviously cut Devontae Parker, parted ways with Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, but last season, he ranked fourth on the Vikings in terms of targets, receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns, although he did have seven drops. Um, he only missed one game last season and has registered, at the very least, 550 receiving yards in each of the last three seasons. So is he going to be their number one guy? Probably not. Uh, but he could be their number two or number three. I still would like to see the Patriots build a little bit through the draft. But K.J. Osborne was one of the better receivers that was still on the market. And it's good to see the Patriots bringing in a guy that I think will be productive. Not going to move the needle too much, but it is an additional weapon, an underrated weapon, in my opinion, that is going to fit very well into that new Alex Van Pelt run West Coast offense. But Patriots still got to build through the draft. Now, maybe this takes a little bit of pressure off them having to take a receiver early, like in the second round. Maybe they can wait until the third round, address the tackle position at the 34th pick. Because in all likelihood, they're going quarterback at third. And then you have to really make a tough decision and decide, are you going to draft a receiver? Or are you going to go with the tackle at the top of the second round? Still going to be a lot of decent tackles at the top of the second round. Um, that would be first-round tackles in other seasons. Patriots got Matt Light in the second round many years ago, and I think that's probably the best route. Hopefully Xavier Leggett or a guy like that or Roman Wilson is still on the board when you head into the third round. I wouldn't expect Leggett because he seems to be moving up the draft board, so you're probably losing out on him if you take a tackle in the second round, but there's still a lot of decent receivers they could take. There's also like the guy out of Yale whose name I cannot pronounce, but he's a guy you could probably take in the fourth round, more of a developmental tackle, but obviously a high IQ, a guy that may have to sit a little bit, but can eventually move into that role. And then you're just going to be tackled by committee on the left side until he develops. And then you can maybe take a Xavier Leggett at 34th overall, but a lot that the Patriots could do there. Maybe they trade back into the first round, but I do like this K.J. Osborne pickup. Obviously, he's not Calvin Ridley. And, you know, I'd still love to see them go after T. Higgins. The Patriots are allegedly in the market trying to trade for him. Um, considering he's only got one year left on his deal, they probably could get him for like a third-round pick, perhaps. It may take a second, but I wouldn't make a move like that unless you know you can sign him to an extension. And look, and one of the issues with Higgins is he has not been a number one guy at Cincinnati. So... He would certainly step into a number one role in New England. Um, certainly a physical guy, a guy that's going to be able to replace Devontae Parker and be a lot more productive. Uh, but it depends on what the cost is and if Higgins is willing to sign an extension, which is going to be costly, but the Patriots could afford it. But otherwise, for a rebuilding team, probably not making the Super Bowl next year, you want Higgins for more than one season. So that's the only way. I would trade for him is if you have the assurance that Higgins is willing to sign on for another three to four seasons and he's going to cost you, right? If Ridley costs Tennessee 23 million, Higgins is probably going to cost you somewhere between 25, 30, in my opinion, but worth it if you're going to bring, if you bring in a guy like that with that size, with that ability to make 50 50 catches and he can separate a little bit too. And then you get to Mario Douglas as the slot receiver. Kendrick Bourne is back. You got two great tight, not great, but really good tight ends that can both um, be a pass, pass catchers and run blockers, um, particularly Austin Hooper, who's been a much better run blocker the last couple of years. Then you're in a good situation for whoever this young rookie quarterback is coming in, whether it's Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, or another guy. 